All right, I am here with the great Cody Askins. And uh, no, you've done some great things. I, I've fun. been impressed with you. We, uh, I've known you forever and uh, appreciate the opportunity to interview you. And uh, I, I told Cody when we thought about doing this, I want to ask you some things that maybe other people might be afraid to ask you. Or something please, like that please, that please, I can please. get away with. Yes, right? you could you could get away with whatever he wants, whenever he wants. By the way, wow. so I've known Dallas for. I'm going to redo my notes. Twenty, yeah, twenty one now. Yeah, now nothing's off the table. Yeah. twenty one years. Twenty one years. We actually hosted started. a radio show together for four mm -hmm. years. Yep, yep. Fantasy football. Yep. This is the greatest time of year. Which is kind of crazy. You can already tell by our banter a little bit. We're uh -huh. like, we're like jumping in at the right times and not stepping on each other's toes and stuff, which is that pretty took rare. a minute to get. It was our first, first couple radio shows. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had some producers quit, all that stuff. But uh, <laughs> producers curse for yeah. sure. <laughs> like, what are these dudes yeah. doing? Yeah, no, that was a good time. But so, uh, I mean, to look at where to go, give us a background on us. We both started Mutual of Omaha. Yes. And on me, I quit Mutual of Omaha a couple times. But it was you that, and not so much you coming to me saying, Dallas, you got to get back in the insurance, got to back. Yeah. I would listen to you. You just, you'd come and we'd be talking, be like, yeah, I had a big sale yesterday. And I'm like, Okay, tell me about it. Yeah. And my wife even mentioned, Dallas, that's when you light up. You yeah. Know, that's when you're having fun. And so got me back into insurance and then, of yes. course, came over to Secure Insurance Group. We worked yep. together a lot. I remember the first time we saw what a final expense plan paid. Yeah. Because we were used to like a lot lower commission 12% and a cookie. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, it just, I remember us lighting it up and going out and, oh, yeah. And we had a good time getting we chased by dogs. We had some $20,000 weeks. We did. We had we some really monster did. weeks in FE. I think I'm a large part of that 117. Even I though think I wasn't so. there for first year. No, but that's no. probably, yeah, I got to give you a lot of credit. So, in my, tell me if my memory's correct. Okay. How you kind of got into this. Okay. We were doing FE. Yep. A lot of FE. Yes. Traveling and staying in hotels in, gosh, Cape Girardeau. Sykeston. I drove by one that we stayed in here a while back. Those are in the Blue Hill of Missouri, gone. by the way. Okay. Like the hotel has been destroyed. Was that the one that we stayed at that we thought should have been demolished to oh begin with? Oh my gosh. Right it there was, on the highway? Right yep, there on the interstate? Right there on the highway. It was the like highway. a Days Inn or Nasty something. Nasty hotel. Can't believe we stayed at that right? place, by the way. We'd go stay three or four days, yep. sell FE. It worked, I, by the way. Those trips, we uh, so so to catch you guys up. We and, and he's talking about the Boot Hill of Missouri or these mm -hmm. different parts of Missouri. Way out there, we would go. We even went to Northwest Arkansas at one point, and we would go. Uh -huh. We would drive hours from home. That stupid and trip. Door knock a bunch of age leads, and and cold and and actually cold knocks too. Mm -hmm. And we would stay in an area for a couple days, up 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 to a week, mm -hmm. and actually door knock and canvas that area. And we would come home with, I mean, sometimes it would take us like four or five hours just to submit all the apps when we got mm -hmm. back. I yeah. mean, so we'd have, we'd have trips Good where we'd times, write man. 30 applications yeah. in like three or four days, which I know is probably, there's going to be someone jump in the comments and say that that's, that's nothing. That's BS, but I'm yeah. telling you, or that it's nothing. Yeah. And so a lot of people, it isn't anything by the way, but it was, uh, it was impressive. It was cool. Yeah. We had a good you time. You were great at the relationship piece. Well, that's why we worked well together. Yes. Cody has always been the guy. I don't, I don't know listen if you guys to anybody. Know. Well, you're the guy with the facts. You're going to, yeah. you know, Here's how we do this. Here's how we do this. Do this. I'll build a relationship. You get. I can the facts, move the cell boom, along. Move the yeah. cell along. It, we worked really well together. I, really I enjoyed did. that. Uh, but then you started seeing. We started buying some leads, right? Yes. And you're That's like true. Dallas. I can do this. Yeah. I can create these leads. So you started creating some leads for us. Oh, why I always thought, I always think that about everything. Like mm -hmm. someone else is doing something really well. I'm like I can do that. I can do that. And that's not always true either. By the no. way, like I learned last night. Uh, uh, Chef Tiny in Springfield, Missouri, yeah. cooked a Wagyu filet. I can't do that. Yeah. Now, he could teach me how to do that, but I can't just see it and do it. Well, everybody has. And I think that's one thing, and I want to get to this in a minute, uh, how you've grown and that I've noticed is yeah. learning what you can't do. 100%. Like, see, that's where we're different in one area. 100%. I struggle with learning what I can do, like my confidence level and getting there. You struggle with learning what you can't do. Yeah, we, we've probably met that. each other yeah. now to where we, we were at two crazy ends of the spectrum. Sure, uh, I'm still working on it. But here, the thing about it is, though, you saw that you could do that, and then yeah. you're like, Dallas, I can sell these leads, right? Yeah. And that's when you kind of started going towards the mentoring. Yes. You learned that you hated Selling leads because yes. every lead sucks. Yes. Right. I mean, it's never perfect. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, I'm glad we got a marketing company now because selling leads to agents is really frustrating. Yep. It yep. really is. And then just went into the mentoring side of it. And, and so let me ask you this Who was the person 
that you saw mentoring and you said, I can do that? Um, I would say there was a few people. Um, I remember sales managers early on in my career and I would look at them and think, man, they're getting up on a whiteboard and they're training. I can do that now. Yeah. But I was never asked to do it. Right. right? I'm like 20. So I wouldn't ask me either. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know where, where that, I don't know where that, that gene come from or that confidence factor comes from. But I'll, cause I always see somebody do something. And I'm like, dude, I could do that. Not from a selfish or jealous standpoint, but just that enough right. ability and confidence in myself to do it. Um, also saying, seeing, I mean, honestly, seeing David, or my buddy, David Duford on YouTube, I'm like, yeah. dude, if he could YouTube, I could YouTube. Yeah. Come on now. Uh, and then seeing Cardone do what he was doing and then watching my grandfather as a pastor for years and seeing my dad super successful and, um, see, even seeing you move around to some different churches, actually preaching and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I've yeah. always wanted to be on stage speaking. Right. I didn't have that ability, but I felt like I did. I have a little bit of natural ability just maybe because of my grandpa, I don't know, but, um, I always knew, and two, Sean Powell years ago actually yeah. asked me to go to Northern Missouri. I don't, I don't tell the story a lot. He, he asked me to go to Northern Missouri and said, hey, um, there's two guys, Greg and Hunter, you know who I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yep. Um, last name's sort of the B. Mm -hmm. And they're in, I don't know, somewhere. And I need you to come up here. They're brand new. They're not making any sales. They're not making any money. I need you to help them. So I drove like, I don't know, what is it, four or five hours up there? Yep. Up to Northern Missouri, spent a day. Long story short, we made like five sales in a day from cold canvas door knocking. Mm -hmm. I left the business with them and drove home. And what that did is I was like, dude, if I can do this the rest of my life, how now I would like to make money doing it because I didn't make yeah. any money that day. However, I got more satisfaction and joy out of seeing someone else make money. And I think a lot of people on the planet are like this, by the way. I get more satisfaction after seeing somebody else make money than even when I made sales my own. Yeah. So is there still someone that you look at now that say, okay, I want to get to there? You know, like, oh yeah, we always have to have somebody yeah. better. Like, yeah. I like when I hear inter athletes interviewed and yes, and that you ask them who's the best at this, and they yep. say, it's me. Yeah, right. But it's, it's just, yeah, come on. I would hate yeah. to be at the top of my game. Now, if you're Brady, you, yeah, you, you know, maybe that's true. But uh, other than that, like, who else is actually going to say that potentially? You right. Know? But it drives me nuts too. I mean, I say, for, I would say for me, um, I'm watching, I'm seeing Eric Thomas. Yeah, with such man. pacing at the conference yeah. as a motivational speaker, and I'm he's like, got everybody dude. screaming "USA" two minutes into his. He just, yeah, like, like people haven't found their seat that? yet, and all of a sudden we're ready to join I'm the getting, Olympics. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps, and yeah, yeah, we're all ready to join the military yeah. two minutes <laughs> exactly. in, man. You yeah. know, um, then amazing. Patrick Bet David. Yeah, seeing him from a content standpoint. So, so I'm I'm in this weird equilibrium right now where I'm like, okay. Am I a motivational speaker or am I a speaker with content? And I'm like, I think I'm a little bit of both, but I, but I, I'm liking seeing Patrick Ray David so much that I like being the, the the content speaker too. Um, I'm just watching people. I was studying a guy, actually random, just this Sunday for a few hours. I was studying his YouTube channel. His name's Alex Hermosi. He built a, um, he actually helps gyms launch, mm -hmm. and he built a company to over 100 million by the age of 32. Wow. I'm 31, and I'm like, dang. Little... This dude is destroying me. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm finding people are doing something big. And they, they're not all in the insurance space, by the way, because I believe we can learn. That's why we also have That's other huge. speakers at the conference. Yeah. You can learn from anyone. Absolutely. We both learn from a lot of successful real estate people locally too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? So yeah. I think that that's where I differ from a lot of people in the industry. They only study industry people. Mm -hmm. I study everyone. Yeah. Nice. I like that. That's, uh, that's huge. Uh, so if we could go back to the first eight percent, we were both there, right? Yeah. If it could go wrong, it went wrong. October twenty sixth and twenty seventh of twenty eighteen. We yeah. schedule during AEP. Yes. Right. Yes. Won't find that happening again. No. No, you won't. Uh, we book Titan Stadium, which is a massive venue. We won't see me doing that for a very long time. It was uh, cold, wet. Rainy. Yeah, we were going to put it on the field. Yep, going to be on and the, the field. the week of, we found out it was going to, weather was going to be horrible, and we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then we had all the sponsors in the tunnel. And my buddies showed up with my wife the day before, and they're like, dude, you can't put the freaking booths in this wind tunnel. Yeah. They're never going to make it. So then we just moved everything up into this little club lounge, and yep. it worked out better. Worked out well. It wasn't. I'll never forget. Everybody shows up day one with Starbucks and coffee, all this stuff. And security's like, nope, no drinks. You can't take it in. Yeah, you can't take anything. It's a stadium. It's still tight and stadium. We didn't think still, about that. Yeah, we didn't think about that. That's also, uh, that's why I preach details delay now. Mm -hmm. Now, I could have paid a little more attention to the details, by the way. Um, can you mess with my mouth? I just came from the dentist. Dude, I got in and out of Papagayo's office in 20 
five minutes. I feel like I should do a pop. 20 minutes right in here. the chair. Uh, dude, he asked me if we're still doing the radio <laughs> show, by the way. It's our local dentist that actually sponsored our radio together. show for a yeah. while. Unbelievable guy. Um, 417. Eight. No, yeah. Uh, we could probably still recite it too. Um, he, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know where I was. Oh, the, 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 the conference. Yeah. We learned so much, but I have learned a lot by just doing yeah. and doing really quickly. So my question is, this is one of those things that I'm going to ask you. How much did you lose on the first conference? About $200,000. Would you do it all the same again? Now, that's a dumb question. Like, would you lose 200000 But would you change something? Or was that I mean, a $200,000 lesson was, that was worth it? Yeah, it was an investment. Yeah. Um, I still view it as an investment. Most people were viewed as a loss. I view it as an investment. Mm -hmm. I'm also okay. Would I lose $200,000 again? If I can avoid it, I wouldn't. Right. But if it's going to further the yeah, but if it's going to further the mission of the brand, I'm in. If you said yes, I've got some ways we can lose yeah. two hundred thousand. I may on this. I've road got show. a for sure thing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I may on this ten city road show. I don't yeah. think I will. There's a chance I lose six figures. Yeah, because I'm going to spend sixty, eighty grand per city. Right. I mean, we saw how much it cost. We did the main event for Secure Insurance Group this past. I think it was May. Yeah, it takes a lot a bit. to put yeah. on an event. Man, people don't realize yes. how much it costs. Yeah, Secure Insurance, what he's talking about, Secure Insurance Group did. We yes. bring in all of our top agents. We did 120 agents, right? Yeah. Tom Hegna, uh, the Chiefs mascot, Dan Mears, I believe yeah. his name. Yeah. Uh, a lot of different, that was fun, man. And that's that stuff that we do. A little plug there for SIG. Yeah, that was a blast, uh, man. It was, was fun. Awesome. But the thing about it is, too, I think people are so scared of failure. Now, of course, we're not setting out to fail. No. But... Tell me a little bit about, you know, when it comes to failure, uh, how do you keep yourself from getting down? Because yes. the, the thing is, like, you've gotten bigger. How many YouTube followers, all that stuff? What we're are we? actually, a, we're at 49,000. We're almost a 50K. 49,000. This I episode promise may you, be our first one when we hit 50K, actually. There we go. I promise you out of 50K, there's at least 1,000 yeah. that are following you to hate. Oh, Right. More than that. Right. But how do you not let that get to you? Because I am like, I'm the guy on Facebook. I go through and I read the comments. Yeah. Right. And my wife's oh, I know like, you. put I know, your I know freaking you phone do. down, yeah. man. I know you do. You can't do that. How you used do you... to do that for the show. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and, oh, you do a radio show publicly. You put yourself out there. You can get some hate, you know. So how do you keep that? How do you, do you use it? Do you ignore it? Well, do you use it? What do you do? Some of it I use. Mm -hmm. So um, some of it I use. I won't go into a story I was going to share, but I'm not going to do it. Um, some of it I use, um, some of it I ignore because it's like, it, okay. So for example, the stuff that, her, that, that I, that I take is like, dude, you touch your belt too much when you speak or you sniff, what are you on cocaine? Um, <laughs> and right now I'm going to, because allergies and ragweed's really high and my allergies have been freaking nuts the last not the 48 hours. Sugar. No. Um, not, I hadn't even heard that until today, yeah. but, uh, that, that kind of stuff. Or like, yeah. hey, you, you should think about moving when you speak. Or, you know, hey, why, don't, why do you use a whiteboard so much? Like some of it I'll take. Okay. Right. So for example, I had a lady, I was in speaking at a, a, a conference in Dominican and, and she said, hey, you said the word freaking 11 times. She stopped me in the, like, I, it was an intermission. I was training for two hours, <laughs> speaking for two hours, wow. an hour break and an hour. She comes to me at the middle of it. And says, hey, you said we're freaking 11 times. Can you cut it out? We're, we're a Christian organization and we're trying to get, change people. We don't let them do that kind of stuff. And I'm like, a freak. It was free, freaking, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what the freak am I doing? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So that I can take. Well, you say, well, how could you take that? Well, I could take that because um, some people would say that's silly. You, you don't curse. Rarely. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. What the right. freak is she talking about? Yeah. Or you could say, well... Maybe she doesn't hear the message the first hour because of something I do, right? right. Accept responsibility. Maybe right. it's my fault. Yeah. And there's a, there's a, so, so if I can change it and it's going to help impact a greater amount of people, I will listen and try to change. I didn't used to be like that, by the way. I will. Um, That's a humility thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, or, hey, you're a scam. Yeah. Dude, I know I'm not a scam. You're, you're screwing people. Uh, I know I'm not. Um, this is the worst training I've ever seen. Yeah, I know it's not because of the amount of lives it's helped. Let's be either the worst or the best. Yeah, that's One of the true. Two. That's true. You may remember it either way. <laughs> so there's certain things. Yeah. It's like, okay, I isolate it. And then the third thing that helped is having a buffer. Dylan reads all the comments. Really? No, I feel bad for him <laughs> and Cassidy and Kelly yeah. and everybody else. But they, they read, he, he responds to all the comments. Yeah. If they're hateful, 
he may just like like it and say, hey, thanks for your feedback. For your input, yeah. Right. So so we don't care. But that buffer, I think there's a point where you get you grow and you're you know you're doing the right thing and you're trying and you're trying to improve every single day and you know you're trying to do your best. You're you're speaking and you want to impact people, but you don't need to know all that every day too at some mm -hmm. point. So I, I rarely actually I shouldn't say this, but when people when you guys are putting up hate, hateful comments, I rarely see it. Yeah. Nice. Bring them on. Not that you should stop because I think it actually helps the engagement yeah. level. So if you could throw a few well, more in, that would be great. And here's the thing. I've always said there's two types of people in this world. Those that want to see you succeed. Those that don't. Yes. You know, I used to get a little jealous of people. Um, but it's like, what does it do? Right. Yeah. And then I'm less happy because of it. So now someone's like, I just, I just think, man, what can I learn from them? And what can I do to get to their level? Well, and there's, now, I will say one thing that uh, I've enjoyed watching about you. If you would have told me years ago, you're going to yeah. go and become an insurance mentor, right? Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't have even known if there was a space for that. It's a good point. Like I, we had 800 and some odd people. Yeah. Right, I'll ask the fire, yeah. fire marshal there in yeah, Dallas. Yeah, for real. Uh, he could tell She us. knows exactly how many we had. Kicked like six people out. Yeah. Uh, I was one. I <laughs> no. uh, had to leave just so we could continue. The... Uh, the fact that you've opened up this space, what are you most, I'll tell you what I'm most, I think you've done for the industry more than anything. Okay. Is transparency. Yeah. Right. Like when we first started. And connecting. Yeah. You didn't even write, you didn't want to write your numbers. We had the board there at Mutual of Omaha. You didn't want to write your numbers on the board. Yeah. Because all it did was people would come to your office. How'd you get that? Did you say, I did, did your, early you know, on because I could brag on lead? myself. But did then you get every, a, every you time know? someone would come and say, hey, dude, what'd you do this week? You had two grand. What'd you do? Yeah, what'd you do? And I got tired of that. It gets old. Now, like, and, and if you did find something successful, if you found a niche, you, that was like your secret fishing spot. Yeah. You did not, you know, that's, that's like a good point. You know, now you've got people, you're doing videos with people all the time saying, hey, yeah. here's how we do this. Here's how we do this. Here's how we do this. I think that's opened it up. What What are you proud of that you've done for the industry? Uh, I think I've connected it in a way and I've had um, people that were supposed competitors that didn't like each other mm -hmm. that are now friends. Yeah. Um, I think I've connected a world. Also too, I've learned like, um, for example, like Secure Insurance Group, right? Like some people could say, well, Cody, you have your own event and you're part owner and secure insurance group. Dallas is our uh, agent manager or whatever. He's, yeah. he, he's really Recruiter. director of like yeah, agent yeah. operations. Yeah. Really. That sounds yeah. better. I like that. Yeah. Um, Write that down for me, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but then some people bring the, they're afraid of bringing their agents because they're afraid of getting recruited. What I've learned is what 8% is doing is if you don't bring your agents, nobody knows you mm -hmm. and then they're probably gonna get recruited because they, we don't know you. You're not in the inner circle. Right. right? So what's happening is when you come, like you've got, Roger and Pete and Justin and Nate and all these people there, I'm connecting them. They're learning from one another. They're becoming friends and then they're not recruiting each other's people. Yeah. There's people that I won't recruit. I've had people come to me and say, Hey, a I'm lot. with X, Y, Z. And I'm like, Nope, we've had a that's, lot. That's your guy. Yeah. Thank that's you. My by boy. The way, oh, we've Merwin, had a lot. You know, somebody like that. Oh, Tony Merwin. Totally. I'm, not, I'm not taking Merwin's people. No. You know, it's no. just, yeah. So last question. Uh, and I think this is probably the most, we didn't, you and I, we don't do show prep. We don't do. No, there's there, no prep there for sure. There are no notes here. There's no notes, no prep. Your dad is, is probably the most instrumental person in your life, correct? Sure. I've worked with your dad for 20 years. Yep. And uh, I'll continue to work with him as long as uh, my key opens the lock every morning, then I'll be here. I imagine it probably always will. Yeah. Uh, like you said, I do a lot of recruiting and agent training and all that stuff. Yeah, for relationships. He relationships. travels. He'll even help yep. travel and do seminars for mm -hmm. people. I mean, he does. He, Dallas does a lot. Dallas is, uh, doesn't get bragged on enough. Well, and that's really, not why I went here. <laughs> I know, but that's still, uh, it needs to be said because you're, well, thank you. you are family for sure. I've never had a brother. Well, so. appreciate it. Yeah. So this is my, this is, this yeah. is my brother. Like it or not. I need to borrow some money. More like <laughs> uncle, maybe. You're quite yeah. a bit older yeah, than thank me. Thank you. Uh, you went up and then there we went. Uh, <laughs> So tell me, what is it that you have taken from your dad that drives you still today? Yeah. Like, for example, let me give you, I know that if you did something that was not a, what something a person of integrity would do, yep. you would still have to answer to him. Totally. Right? 100%. He would sit me down. 
Exactly. What is it that still drives you that your dad has done for you? And, you know, uh, first is, first is, um, I would say first is integrity. Mm -hmm. The dude always does the right thing no matter what. I never have to worry about him doing the right thing ever. Yep. Money doesn't matter. Like he's just always doing the right thing. Yep. Um, second would be work ethic. He, he outworks everyone. Yeah. Try working for him. Dude. His desk is here. Mine is here. Good luck. And I'm telling you. And you were, you work hard too. Well, I, I do now because he sits right behind <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it just like, I still don't know what time we're supposed to go home. I'm like, it's 7.30, boss. Yeah, for real. It's nah, crazy. But it's fun. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then um, that's true, too. Like, I always felt bad at, at Mutual if I would leave at like 6 o'clock. Yeah. Because I'm like, gosh, he's still in there working. You I get, know he you, is. You going to lunch? Or? Yeah, I know he is. Yeah. <laughs> Some days you won't eat lunch, too. I'm yeah. like, you got to eat. I, I do eat, though. So Kelly takes care of me. Yeah. Um, And then other things, <clears throat> I would say... I would say from both my parents too, like to throw my mom in there too, just because of, um, I saw her work several jobs early on yeah. when I was, um, I didn't really see it cause it was like the first few years of me being alive. However, I hear about a lot of those stories and see some of the places where she worked in Wynn, Arkansas years ago, but the two of them, I've just seen the way they treat other humans mm -hmm. and people and how they interact with people and how they care for people, how they go out of the way to do stuff for people like you do. And I can tell you that, uh, I mean, that's what's special about SIG is, is they go out of the way to make sure that we do whatever we possibly can to help someone. Yeah. I mean, I've even heard you tell your dad when we first started, you can't pay that much commission. Oh, yeah. You I keep tried more, to change keep everything. Keep more was commission. Doing. It's just not his. Yeah. No. Okay. Last thing. Give me something that people don't know. What's coming up? Mm. Give me a shocker. Okay. I'm pulling out the uncle or brother card here. Well, you may know it because we may, you may have heard about it. The last two days. I don't pay attention. We put an offer in on uh, 160 Grand Prix. I did hear that. Yeah. Three miles south of Springfield. Lori, Lori, which is a go-kart track, people. It is. A go-kart track, right? But there's Lauren more reasons in to that. Yesterday, she goes, hey, Dallas, I'm buying the go-kart track. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm going to be working on a go-kart track. We don't think about a lot. Yeah. We just figure it out. I'm in. I'm like, are you sure we can do that? She's like, what's funny? What's funny is now my wife's like, We'll figure, we always figure it out, don't we? So is it going to keep me in a go-kart track? What are, what are the plans? Yeah, we're going to do it. You're going to keep a go-kart track. You're going to keep the putt-putt. We're going to get rid of the batting cages and turn it into like pickleball. Nice. Do, they got this place in Kansas City called like Chicken and Pickle. And they, people pay to reserve the courts all day. And it's really cool. So, But also, she wants to put a gym on the property. There's nine acres yeah. um, right off of, right on the highway. Right high, on the river, Right too. on the road. Right river on the river. Highway, yeah. um, there's Beautiful. four and a half acres currently being used. There's another four and a half acres that's open. So the idea is, I haven't even told my dad about this idea yet. The one idea is to, Laura must put a gym on it. Mm -hmm. The other idea is to put our office tower there. Man. Four or five stories and put it on the back part of that and have build it up tall, have some good frontage. There's 40,000 cars going by there a day. Um, put a billboard by the road. We could do whatever we wanted, right? I could put a right. massive sick billboard. Medicare, whatever, and uh, do like SIG on the bottom level, security marketing on the next level, Cody Askins and Apers Nation on the next level, and then like maybe a conference facility room for like conferences and events, with, like a stage and lighting and all that kind of stuff. And then um, maybe like a, maybe a workout facility, maybe not if we have a gym next door, and then like a balcony for socials and stuff. But think about having like business retreats. And then yeah. we'll walk, we can walk to the gym, we In can walk go to go-karts, yeah. we can go pickle to pickleball, ball. maybe get a basketball court out there. Wow. I want, okay. We want to create something fun. And so that's a later thing, but we're trying to find land. But we I just saw the day it was like 4 million bucks for like three acres right off of uh, like Bradford Parkway over there. Man. This is like yeah. three miles away. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm in. So there you <laughs> go. It, I, we, so. I haven't talked about that yet either. Yeah. So that's new. That's Very fresh. Cool. I like talking about new stuff too. That's, yeah. that's always fun. Very nice. Well, man, thank you for letting me do this. Dude, I anytime. appreciate it. Anytime. And, uh, Let's keep going. Let's do it, brother. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Okay, I'm going to jump into the content. I've got a six page ebook. If you would like a free copy of the ebook, go to codyaskins.com forward slash ebook. Okay, write that down. Go on your phone. You can even grab it now and follow along. Again, codyaskins.com, my first name, last name.com forward slash.